Hello boys and girls, Steve Hobo with Wood here again, and this video is going to be a short video uh, showing how to design the American flag using Lightburn completely freehand with no assistance from any artwork. We're just going to do this with our shapes, lines, and do it relatively quickly using the array tool and using the shapes properties tool. All right, so if you're not familiar with the array tool or the shapes property, you're definitely going to watch this video and, and see how these things work. I'm not going to go into detail on them, and if it's something that you would like to see more about or learn more about, put the comment down below. Say, so, hey, can you explain a little bit more in depth about the array or about this? And I'll be glad to go into further. But here's just to kind of skim the surface and show you what you can do and how quick you can do it using the tools already in Lightburn. So... Let's jump in here to Lightburn. We have a blank canvas here. And when you talk about the American flag's dimensions, the military standard, and it's not a rule or a law, but it kind of most commonly used in the military, the aspect ratio for it is a 10 by 19. And I'm going to work in millimeters, and I'm going to use literal terms here. Now I'm going to rule. Uh, leave this unlocked so I can put in here uh, my ratio and it, that made it really small but that's okay because we're going to move it to the center of the page and then zoom in and take a look okay that's what's beautiful about this light burn man you can make it as small as you want design in really really fine detail all right now we want to lock that ratio in fact I need to put this on a toolpath and now thinking about the flag, you've got your union with 50 stars and then the 13 stripes in the canton. 13 stripes going into dimensions of 10 millimeters is going to be a lot of hard math. And hopefully I don't mess up the simple math. But to make this as simple as possible, we're going to lock this and we're going to take this to 13. Now that increased our width by the correct ratio so we still have the right proportions here for our flag but now we've got 13 millimeters which is going to make real easy math for putting in our 13 stripes so now let's work on the union the union is not uh in fact it needs to be on an actual layer so put that on layer now the union is not quite half of the width of the flag but it's more than a quarter of the flag somewhere in that neighborhood of a third or so. But what we do know for absolute is that there are seven stripes that come down the side of the union. So if that's seven stripes and we're going to use a millimeter per stripe, then this needs to be a minimum or it has to be exactly seven millimeters here. So we're going to unlock this and we're going to tell it seven millimeters. Now we have the right height of our union, but that's not quite the right width so now we'll bring this out to where it starts to look about right and and that's that's looking pretty good right in there where are we at here all right uh 24 7 is overall this is now at 10 1 for again for easy math when we put this at 10 7 that looks pretty good Okay, all right, so that's already selected, so we can hold our shift key, so click and select our toolpath, bring it all the way to the top, and then all the way to the left, aligning our edges. Now that union is now looking pretty good to me, dimensions wise, and also, uh, do I want to go any bigger? Let's just look here if we take go 11.7. Oh no, stupid. You didn't put in enough one. 11.7. Hmm. We'll just do 11 even. That needed to be a little bit bigger. All right. We'll make the math a little bit more challenging, but we'll get there. All right, now we need seven bars. Let's 
So we can just draw anything because we're going to put in our dimensions. We, well, that's one millimeter right, and then this is 24.7 minus 11, so 13. Well, that was awful darn close. 13.7. All right, and it's already selected, so hold our shift key and select our tool path, align it to the top, and then now we need to bring this over, so we're going to align it to the right. So now that also fits in there. Now, select just that bar and come down here to our little checkerboard or tic-tac-toe board. That's our array tool. I'm going to bring this over here to where you can see. We're going to be working on rows, not our columns. And you want to make sure you have zero spacing in your Y spacing, X spacing. We're only working on Y here, but make sure you got zero spacing. And we're going to, down here shows you your total count. Right now we've got our original, which is one, and we need seven. So we come up here to the top and increase our number to seven. Now, because we did that early math and calculated that out for the right, we get it right to the bottom of the union. It's already aligned to the right side of our tool path, so that's done. Ah, I'm supposed to hit OK, stupid. All right, but, and now, OK, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna take and grab all these and group these together, because those, those are set, those are done. Now we need our bottom six. And those, we know this was 24-7 and one millimeter, so we can just draw anything, come in here and tell it it's 24.7 and one millimeter. And this one is already selected, so now we're gonna select our tool path, and we're gonna come up here and align it to the bottom. And now we're gonna align it to the right, or the left, it don't matter, because this is gonna fill that completely. Now, come here, and we come back to our array tool, we're still working just with our rows, and we need six of them come here. So if we come here and go six, watch what happens. Oh, that's going the wrong direction, that's okay. Because right here, you can come down here and reverse the direction. So I already had it checked, so now we're gonna uncheck it. And now, so if I come in here and go six, that just created six, filled that up, tell it okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna come in here and grab everything, group it all together, move it out of the way, get rid of my tool path. And now we have our union and our Kenton. Uh, the, and looking at this now, this the union might could have been a little bit bigger, but uh, that's personal preference, uh, you know, to a degree. But let's uh, come in here now. We need to create our 50 stars. Now, this is where it sounds like this could be the challenging part, but it's actually really easy using the hexagon shape here, or this is our polygon tool, holding down our shift button so we draw a, a uniform shape but this is a hexagon six-sided shape can't make a star out of that so if you don't have your shape properties already open over here in your menus you can access it a couple of different ways you can come here to windows and window and come down here to shape properties and that'll open it up or if you just have that selected and then right click, show properties, then that's gonna open up the shape properties menu over here. Right now it's showing you down here at the bottom, this is a six sided shape. Well, you need a five sided shape, not seven, five. There we go, now we have a pentagon. So we can close our shape properties, we're done there. We're gonna zoom in on that go to our pencil and I have my snap 
in here. So I'll click until it draw till it comes to that point. Snaps in there. Next one. And lastly, oh, didn't quite get that. So we're going to need to do that over. Pencil. Okay, now that is a closed shape and we wanna make sure we have our original Pentagon selected and delete it. Now you could edit this star out a couple of different ways by going into node edit and uh, trimming and, and cutting, but there's an easier way to do it. Select your star, come to your offset tool and you wanna check a couple of things. You wanna make sure you're doing an outward offset that you're not using round or beveled edges uh, and we're going to do a small offset I've got a, and I'll show you here why uh, I'm doing a point two let's just say we're doing a we did a point eight so we can kind of see it a little bit more and here it's on corners uh, that point eight is distorting the star point six still a little screwy Round we don't want, beveled we don't want, and, and that's actually what it's doing. It's showing us beveled instead of corners. Uh, what happens when we go back to my point two? Yeah, something's not going right there with our offset tool. Round, bevel, that should be pointed. So let's cancel that. Try it again. Select it. Go back to offset. And there's a corner. So if I go to point eight, Hmm. Howard. Well, I don't know why it's doing that, but it looks good here. Uh, I don't know why we're not getting my corners to show there. But by keeping it relatively small and 0.02, even if it is showing bevels right now, it's not looking bad. So we've got an outward and a very small, small offset. Okay, select the original, delete it. Now we have a star. Zoom out, come down here and position it and it's relatively close proximity to where it's going to be located. Obviously that's way too big. We're not gonna be able to get 50 stars in there that size. But what we do, we need to position this one in its most likely position. And what I'm looking at is the size of that star. And then I'm also looking at the proximity from the top and from the side. And that looks pretty good. Now we're gonna see if we can get 50 of them in here that size, because I haven't done any sizing or checking, which we don't need to. We're gonna come in here to the array tool, the checkerboard check down here again. And now we're gonna be working on our columns. And we got zero, zero. If I, not our columns, sorry. We're working on the rows right now. And I need to change my direction back, reverse direction. And I need six to go down that column or that row there. Oh, uh, so that's still just a wee bit big. So I cancel that and I can shrink her down a little bit more. Move it up to where I think it needs to be. Go to our array tool. Reverse direction. So that can be a little bigger yet.
That looks good. All right. Now let's look at our columns. There's and down here it shows us our total count. That looks pretty good. It can stand to be centered a little bit more to the right. And we've got 54 stars here, but that's okay. We're going to say okay. And now we're going to select these four extra stars at the bottom and delete them. And now we're going to select all the stars, group those together, and then select our union and tell it to bulls out. Not that. Oh, that's right, because I grouped everything. So undo, ungroup, and there we go. And now make sure I got my stars and then the union and that it's centered. Now I can zoom out, select everything, group it all together. And now you have an American flag. Did I get those right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six rows is 30, and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, five, fours is 20, 30 is 50 stars, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 bars. So that was not hard to do at all. Uh, just doing it on the fly and not having any kind of union or stars to go with. Uh, and that's something you could put in. In fact, I'm going to. I'm going to put that in my library. Uh, so my art library. Do I have anything that's already called flags? Nope. All right. Or USA. No, wait a minute, states. No, all right, so we're going to create a new art library. And I'm in my light burn and art already, so we're just going to call this one flags. Save. Now that just created a new category in my art library, flags. So now since I've already grouped that, I can just highlight that and then import graphic from project and then name it, spell it right, and so now that I've created that, I can use that again anytime I need to, so I don't have to design it again. Project's been modified. Do you want to know? We don't want to save nothing. All right, so now we go out and look. You've got a completely blank screen. And I come in, I say, oh, I'll grab this and add it to my project. Boom. Now, it's awful small, right? But it doesn't matter because we've got everything locked. And we come in here and make it as big or as small as we want to. So that, boys and girls was a how-to on using the array tool and the shape properties tool that you may not have even known you had. Uh, if you enjoyed this or would like to see more about shape properties, uh, what those other spacings and all are for, how they work, what the measurements, how they're calculated, we can dive deeper into that. But I hope you've enjoyed this quick, short video. This has been Steve, Hobo with Wood. We'll see you in another video.